Well, welcome back, everyone, to day three of our NAM virtual coverage from AudioBiz. And uh, joining us uh, today uh, is going to be uh, Gary and Mark from Pliant Technologies. Pliant Technologies is a premier manufacturer of uh, wireless intercom. So we're going to be talking about wireless intercom today. Uh, but just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Just make sure uh, you guys uh, are commenting and interacting we can pull those questions uh, that you may have in uh, online. So make sure that you guys are commenting either in your Facebook stream uh, messengers or uh, the YouTube stream. So we want to interact with you and answer all of your questions. Um, we are also going to be dropping a secret word at some point during the broadcast uh, today. Um, the secret words, uh, we'll play a little... Uh, video here coming up. But our secret words, if you collect all of them from all of our streams this week, uh, you can go to the AudioBiz website and you can register at the end of the week at audiobiz.com forward slash NAM 2021. Um, and you will be entered to win a mystery swag box. Uh, and uh, the mystery swag boxes are filled to the brim with a bunch of cool stuff from all of our vendors. So let me just drop this video in, tell you a little bit more about those swag boxes, and then we'll be right back with uh, Gary and Mark. So what is a mystery box? We've collected swag from all of our manufacturers plus some guaranteed prizes that will be in the limited edition AudioBiz NAM 2021 mystery box. These boxes will be packed at random and filled to the brim with t-shirts, hats, stickers, all the fun swag you'd normally get at NAM. We've collected from all of our manufacturers. We're gonna pack these at random and send them to you. So all you have to do is collect the five secret words. We're gonna drop one every single day. You're just gonna to go to this web address, fill out the form, submit your secret words, and be entered to win. So these mystery boxes are limited to the first 30 people that submit the correct five secret words. So you don't wanna miss out on the videos and you don't wanna miss your chance to win one of our limited edition mystery boxes. This mystery box could be yours. It's so heavy. Don't sleep, get a mystery box. All right, welcome uh, everyone. We've got uh, Gary and Mark coming to us from Pliant Technologies. Thank you guys for joining us on the stream here today. Um, we would typically be at the NAM show, and I know the NAM show isn't necessarily a show that you guys have been attending in the past, but um, you guys are also familiar with, with the NAM show. So we're trying to bring a little bit more coverage uh, of some of the other things, especially in the pro side of the market, uh, to all of our uh, would-be NAM attendees. So thank you guys for uh, joining us. You're welcome. Good to be here. Stay here. Awesome. You know... A lot of people don't know necessarily who Pliant Technologies is. Um, you guys are, as audio biz, we've recently come on board with you guys, so I've been learning a lot about the line. Um, you know, Pliant Technologies is a manufacturer of wireless intercom, um, and they make some pretty cool uh, options. But um, how did uh, you know? How did Pliant get started, and like, where did you guys come from? Great, great question. We're uh, we're probably the uh the biggest company in the intercom business that you've never heard of. <laughs> so going back, the history of the company, we're actually a division of a company called Coachcom, which is okay. C-O-A-C-H-C-O-M-M. -M. Um, and that's also a name that you're probably not familiar with, but you know the product. Uh, most of you uh, who will be looking in are familiar with this kind of uh, popular sport called college football. Uh, college football is a is a pretty big sport, and close to 30 years ago, the fellow who owns our company uh, was at Auburn University, and uh, he was a kind of a technical guy as well as uh, being into finance, and they said, can you help us out with our intercom? And he said, sure, and he did, and then they said, would you come back next year? And he said, no, because this stuff is garbage, and they said, this is the best we can buy. Well, he said, all right, let's see if we can do something better. And that was the beginning of Coachcom almost 30 years ago. Over that time, uh, we began to integrate systems. Uh, there were times that we handled all of the NFL communications. 
uh, for the coaches. And um, for many years when we had before the digital systems that we have now, we had to coordinate frequencies. So each team playing could have a system that would not interfere with the others. And that was called frequency coordination. We did that for all of the teams. We would even have teams, if two teams were playing that did not have compatible systems, we would arrange for them to swap with other teams and really kind of kept the entire um, college football going. Uh, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of give or take a few, 131 A teams, the top teams. We've maintained a 97% market share with those coaches. So wow. when you look, uh, you won't always see Coach Com. You'll probably more likely see the AT&T logo on somebody's headset, and you'll see the small packs that look kind of like this on the on the coaches' belts. Um, that's all of our gear uh, on the sidelines. And, of course, we do also for the lower schools, uh, high school, smaller colleges, we have smaller systems. About uh, 12 years ago, uh, we developed the product for the broadcast industry. Uh, as we were moving to digital, and uh, that product was very successful. It was the first scalable digital intercom uh, that did very well. And uh, we began to working on a current product about five, six years ago, Crewcom. We uh, decided at that point we would begin distributing it ourselves, and we branded, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, we branded Pliant uh, because the name Coachcom didn't really work well for production. They go, we're musicians, we're stage, we're theater. Why are the coach person here? So Pliant is really a rebranding for the professional market. And that's awesome. kind of how we got here. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I have uh, some experience working with uh, the Wisconsin Badgers, helping out doing some RF coordination, and they are one of your users uh, of the Coach Com system. So I get to see that. Uh, go Badgers! Um, you know, so uh, it was a little interesting watching uh, college football this year with uh, everything going on and no no people in the stands. So you know, well, we all roll with the roll with the time. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that's awesome. You guys have some kind of unique technologies with the you know the frequency hopping, and I think that's one of the things that really kind of makes you guys unique um, and able to to perform really well. So you want to go into a little bit of you know kind of how the the you know the technology that you guys are using that really differentiates what Pliant is doing. Sure. Well, we have a, a series of um, well-known engineering principles and designs built in. So it isn't a one specific item that creates a good signal, a robust RF link, they call it, uh, but it's a combination of things. So uh, we do frequency hopping. In the old days, and for many of you may know from wireless microphones, you'd have a frequency, 655.2 uh, megahertz. And that would be a frequency and that was used. Mm -hmm. In our technology, we have a range of frequency. For example, between 902 and 968 megahertz. And we use different set frequencies within there and we change constantly. We're changing frequencies about 10 times, uh, about 100 times a second, every 10 milliseconds. So we're hopping and then we take that same signal and we send it out twice for redundant transmission to make sure we get it. And then we have some special technologies that uh, actually we'll explain a little bit more uh, to reduce what's called multipath or the RF reflections. So we can work in some unusual environments that we'll talk about. Cool, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, you know, being, uh, doing, working with, doing the RF coordination, being able to see see that on um, a spectrum analyzer to see that, that frequency hopping uh, that's happening. It's, it, Pretty amazing from the, you know, the RF geek in me, you know, <laughs> to see the technology of how it's all working. Yeah, there's, th there's a couple of pieces. So the RF is one link because no features help you if you're not connected. Yep. And then once we're connected, we have two things about our system that are very important. It sounds quite good. And so that helps. But we also have one interesting uh, attribute to all of our systems from the smallest to the largest which is high dynamic range. And dynamic range sometimes is mistaken for fidelity, but dynamic range is about level. And by having a high dynamic range, the system actually knows the difference between a nearby soft sound and a background loud sound. What that enables us to do is, uh, and this was developed because of the coaches. So you think about a coach on the field, 
and they're talking to many people and they're surrounded by a hundred thousand screaming lunatics. <laughs> That's a very noisy environment. So that applies when we're in any kind of noisy environment, whether it's construction or a rock concert. I was at a, I was at a Lady Gaga concert. It was probably 112 dB. And you can still, on our system, you can stand in front of an array and talk without yelling, and they can be heard. And people can talk to you, and you can hear them without having to have a level with your ear bleeding. So there's many pieces to make a system functional. That's it. Plus, our systems are all very simple to use, easy and straight ahead. So obviously, you guys have been on a lot of events. You mentioned Lady Gaga, but you know you've been on a lot of sporting events, a lot of craziness. What's what's some of those? What any strange, fun stories that uh, you get to share from behind the scenes of of being at these events? Well, you know, there's there's some interesting challenges, um, and we get some interesting calls. Uh, we have two divisions of our company, so we handle anything that's not sports. Um, so, Mark, maybe you can take a second and talk about. Uh, you know, our involvement in some of the industrial application that people might not be aware of. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we, with the, the nuclear in particular application that we have been working in, uh, that's a peek behind a curtain into a completely different industry that I'm used to being with. I mean, my background, I'm a guitar player. I used to sell, work at a music store. Gary worked in a recording studio. I'm a recording engineer. So we're part of this industry, the AV industry. So now I'm stepping out of that industry and I'm talking to a guy from, you know, it's got more letters after his name than I can spell out <laughs> cognitively in a sentence. And um, we're having a nice conversation about how, my stuff's going to work in his world. And then you're learning about that. So that peak behind the scene is what really, I guess, is the most exciting thing to me. I've been backstage at the Garden. I've been in the bowels of Radio City Music Hall. I've been across NBC 30 Rock, and I've been in um, Weather Channel and Turner. And, you know, I've been in a lot of places. I've been blessed. I have a great job, much like yourself. You know, you work for a prominent rep firm in the middle, mid, you know, middle of the country and you get to see some cool stuff too. Yeah. And, um, but really what jazzes me is seeing the infrastructure of some of these places. Gary and I were at a particular place doing a site survey and this customer had been using our predecessor system, the Tempest system and using it very successfully. And they put in some custom built RF distribution stuff. And that's about the only way I can describe this. And I'll stop there. But seeing all that, witnessing how this particular entity operated, was blew my mind. That blew my mind. And yeah, one one of the things that happens with this technology is that you know we have lots of things behind it. But the reality is that once that's all set up, that's for us geeky sales people, technical people. <laughs> the user only knows one thing: they've got a headset. Somewhere there's a button to press that and they can talk and listen. Yep. So, you know, everybody needs to talk and listen, depending on your environment. So, you know, Mark has handled things like nuclear power. We have small houses of worship where there's a camera operator, just a couple of stage people for a very small, our little portable uh, microcom system, all the way up to a facility uh, like a, a broadcaster in New York City with 385 of our devices in one building. So wow. it really is interesting to see. Uh, we even have a division that does construction where these big bulldozers with the GPSs on the blades and crane operators that we're working with. So everybody needs to talk. And it's, it's kind of interesting being an intercom, how you can uh, interact with some very unusual places. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. So, so this has nothing to do with intercom, but uh, you know, Mark and Gary, you know, coming from the studio and the the musician uh, backgrounds. What did you have a special piece of gear that you you got rid of that you've always wanted uh, to find that piece of gear? Or are, you, are you kicking yourself going, why why did I get rid of that instrument or why did I get rid of that thing? I mean, what's what's your you know the gear that got away? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go first. I had a four twelve. Marshall cabinet with the big basket weave grill, chrome handle pulls, not the black metal like a lot of them. This is a weird one. And it had four original green back Celestrians in it, real deal rollers. That's one. And I had a late 60s, early 70s uh, Gibson SG with the 
the bent metal tremolo system that never stayed in tool tune <laughs> and the um you know pencil thin thick neck that also gave you no sustain and no tone nice. but it was a cool it was angus's guitar you know he had that one with the big metal trapezius thing at the end of it and on a couple of shots and that was one i regret getting rid of yeah I, let's see I, you know on a personal level um probably uh i grew up in new jersey and at that point driver's licenses were at 17 uh where many places are at 16. uh but i was already playing and so i bought my first uh, it was a fender precision bass with a rock maple neck and i sold that to buy my first car which was a volkswagen and right now i wish i had that guitar and i wish i had the volkswagen <laughs> Um, but um, beyond there, you know, I was fortunate. Um, I kind of grew up in the golden age of recording studios. When I was still in high school, I worked building studios and started, you know, making records at a point when somebody would call up the studio and say, I want to make a record. And you'd ask, do you want the kind with the big hole or the kind with the little hole? And was fortunate work with many, many records and many stars. And, you know, we, we were on the charts all the time. It was a great era. And there was so much wonderful technology back then. The old tape machines and some of the very early processing gear. Um, just, you know, really wonderful things that were just so much fun. Uh, one quick example. There was a device that I doubt that any of you have ever heard of called a Cooper Time Cube. No. And the Cooper Time Cube was a... It was a box. It was about 10 inches thick, and it was probably 24 inches square, made out of wood. And it was an early delay line. It was a fixed delay. And what it had inside was a coiled-up garden hose with a small microphone at one end and a small speaker at the other. And that was, you know, I'm dating myself now. This, I'm not quite back to Marconi, but... You know, some of those silly gadgets that people were coming up with to create new sounds were a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, see, that, that's the fun stuff. That's the, the the stuff I like to hear, you know, how people got that sound, you know, push, pushing the envelope. So um, I just wanted to get into you, You've got kind of a, a couple tiers of, of product. Um, you know, we've had two tiers, our, our the, you know, the crew comm system and our microcom system out. And you, you kind of want to explain to us a little bit about, um, you know, kind of where those sit in the marketplace and some of the different features between those systems. And then um, a little bit after that, I think we're going to drop our secret word. But uh, then we can get into you. You've got a new product announcement uh, that just got released, I think. Technically, officially today, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it, it, it yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, let's let's get into what you know, like what the existing stuff is before we j dive into the new stuff. But so the the as Mark mentioned, our Tempest product. Uh, Tempest was released ten or twelve years ago. It was a frequency hopping system. Our first system was a two point four gig system, and it was scalable. You could put multiple systems together and create one larger system. And this was a, a in, at that point in RF, this was pretty high tech and people didn't really understand it. Uh, for example, uh, we had a system that could do four channels and people who had come from the analog world not understanding said, how do you fit four transceivers inside there, four transmitters and four receivers? And the reality is it was just one, but it was a digital packet. So just like we know today, you know, when you stream anything from Dante to AES and, you know, embedded is lots of data and lots of information. And in any digital signal, you know, that, that you can put in whatever you want. So trying to explain to them that, you know, CDs have no audio on them. DVDs yeah. have no video on them. It's just data. It's just one thing. It took some time to transition. So that product did very well worldwide, um, but we knew... Things were changing, new technology was available for us to use, and we began the CrewCom project. So this was the large scalable system. This is what we have at the, the 100, 385 packs. It can start off small, it can go very big, but very powerful. Uh, you can put lots of antennas around, and you can uh, put as many people on as you need, and it roams kind of like a cell phone going down the block. And uh, also, it is very appropriate for something small uh, in a venue like a, a house of worship or, or a small concert because the device is simple to use. 
So it's sophisticated, but not complicated. And then uh, about a year ago, we dropped a new product on the market we call Microcom. And that's the small portable system, a very low price, inexpensive for users. You can get into that at a little over $500 a user with a headset, uh, basic utility, but it's full duplex. And all mm -hmm. of our systems are full duplex. And the important part about that is duplex is just like, Sean, you and I right now, yeah. everybody can hear both of us talking. We're equal. Mark can talk to us too. And so it's like a telephone almost. Both sides can talk uninterrupted. And it's also hands-free. It's not like a walkie-talkie where we're pushing a button. So having a very low-cost duplex system like this is very good. And these are in our 900 megahertz band for the U.S., which gives us very good range. So suddenly for a low price, we have a portable product that's, that's inexpensive. Then we came out with its big brother, the XR, for extended range. And this guy can have up to 10 users okay. and has many features, including two channels. And we can even expand beyond the 10 users, their interfaces to allow you to connect to systems. But they're small, physically portable systems. And actually, let me show you here. These are the, this is the M, just to show you next to me the physical size. So this is the XR and this is the M, both very small. Uh, this guy has what's called an IP67 rating. You may not know what that means, but what it means is that you can actually dunk this in water. It's rated for a meter of water for 30 minutes with no damage. Awesome. 12 hours of battery life, two channels. So again, great utility, lots of little features in there. Uh, and that really kind of changed the marketplace because prior to that, there had been some low-cost product, but it really was not quality. Um, yeah. Even yeah. even if you had a good connection, it was, if there was any noise at all, you couldn't hear. They were made poorly. They really weren't road-worthy or production-worthy. Awesome. Cool. Well, we've got a new product to talk about, but before we do that, I am going to drop my secret word here uh, of the day. So uh, everyone, make sure that you are collecting those words uh, and enter those at the end of the week in our uh, audiobiz.com forward slash NAM 2021 uh, website uh, to be able to get a uh, swag box. Uh, Pliant was uh, generous enough to draw, uh, give us some swag to put in those boxes. So you're getting a, a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, let's Let's uh, drop this word here. The secret word is hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. I mean, we were trying to try to tie it into the trade shows. You know, what trade show doesn't have hand sanitizer? And now, even more important, probably <laughs> these days. But um, so we've got a, you know, you've got the the kind of the the top tier stuff. Uh, covered with the CrewCom, and then you've got the lower tiers with the Microcom and the Microcom XR. So you've got kind of the two two spectrums. Um, and uh, today being released is a, a new product, uh, part of the CrewCom line, if I am not mistaken. Um, but uh, do you want to give us a little bit of rundown about this uh, new guy? Oops, not that new guy. Well, <laughs> I'd be happy to take a run on that new guy. But uh, wrong screen here. This guy, uh, the new yeah. Crewcom CB2 series. So this is um, the baby brother to our Crewcom series. What we've done is we've taken the core technology, meaning the audio quality, the RF quality, the ease of use, uh, compatibility uh, and interface and scaled it down into a smaller system to make it much more affordable. So one of, one of the things was we had the very low end, uh, we had kind of a medium, we had the extremely high end, but for many people, they really just require a smaller system uh, for a church, a, you know, house of worship or a, a college or, or high school stage or maybe just a small rental company is doing dry hire. So this is a product that would allow you to uh, just basically drop and go a system uh, that uses up to six users. It has two channels. It's an either or, if you have A or B, a single volume control. It is full duplex. It uses our range and virtually any professional headset. 
um, you get about nine hours on a battery. These are in the 900 meg range, so they go very well RF-wise. There's a screen on the front of the, the uh, base station that gives you remote readout, so you see the condition of every user. You see how good their uh, the audio data quality is. You see their uh, what channels they're talking on, what channels they're listening on, how much battery life they have. Uh, these guys have a relay and a stage announce output, two, full two-wire, very high-quality hybrid two-wire, and four-wire connectivity, all at price that really hits well. Um, you know, we're talking under ten thousand dollars for a you know six-user system potentially, uh, depending on the headset choice. And really, there's very few products in the market that can do what this can do. And one of the uh, options here is compatibility because we have the ability to link two of these systems together and make a 12 user system. They can be used either as one big system with all of the intercom lines connected or two independent systems, but synchronize the radio so they don't have any conflict. And this can even connect and synchronize with our bigger crewcom systems. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was playing around with, uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, get a sample uh, the other day to play around with. And I do have to say the ease of use is is quite amazing, um, especially for those rental companies, you know, that might be renting it out to maybe a high school or somebody like that. That's not necessarily a huge intercom user, but uh, to get these set up, it, it, there's a super simple link linking process of basically plugging in a cable uh, and the box does everything for you uh, to to get those uh, those packs linked up, um, it's super robust. Um, you guys also have uh, like a six bay charger uh, that you can uh, charge all those units in, use those rechargeable batteries, um, and also recharge spare batteries, which is always good to have on on hand. Um, never want to be without that. And I just you know I have to say like the design, it's it's really slick, um, easy to use. Um, you know. Uh, you also mentioned your headsets. You guys have quite the lineup of, of very pro headsets from very lightweight systems and the you know the uh, CIA style with just the ear coil and uh, the hidden microphone all the way up to the big double muff uh, systems. And I really dig the the smart boom technology that you guys have in there, um, which allows you to just lift your boom up and, and mute your channel. Um, which makes it super easy so you don't have to worry about fidgeting for your pack or, or anything like that. You can leave your channel open and, and flick that boom up. For those of you that are football fans, if you watch the coaches on the field, you'll actually see them rotate up the microphone. They don't have to do anything but that, and that turns off the mic. Yeah. So that's so, a smart boom feature. So you mentioned this is in uh, the uh, 900 megahertz system uh, or range, I guess I should say. Um, and you also have 2.4 gigahertz spectrum stuff. But I guess what what's your uh, reasoning for going more to the 900 meg uh, spectrum yeah. versus 2.4? Like what what's some of the differences? Okay, so we are we are uh, restricted by different laws. One is the laws of the government, what frequencies we're allowed to use. And the other is the laws of physics, what the frequencies <laughs> do in the air. Uh, we have little control over either one of those. So uh, in the 900 meg range, we're very fortunate that North America, that is it's what's called an ISM band. Mm -hmm. ISM band stands for Instrumentation Scientific and Medical. And it was developed and allowed by the FCC as kind of an open band. You can use it without any license or any restrictions, there's obviously requirements you have to meet as a manufacturer and show that you comply. But as a user, you don't need any anything at all. You can just go ahead and use it. So 900 megahertz is available in North America at 902 to 928. It's also available in limited in some places in Latin America and Oceania, which is New Zealand and and uh, Australia, Micronesia, and where they're allowed to use about half of that frequency. Okay. And so we do the 900 because 900 is technically part of the upper band of UHF, which has very good RF characteristics. The rest of the world, we manufacture 2.4. Now you can use 2.4 any place in the world. It's a great international device if you travel, and it's what our international partners use. And while you might instantly be a little concerned about 2.4 because of Wi-Fi, this is not a Wi-Fi product. 
it's actually compatible with Wi-Fi, and that's part of the magic of the digital signals. You can have multi multiple devices sharing uh, one RF spectrum. And an example of that is we could have three or four people in the same room, all with computers on 2.4. The computers don't fight each other, and we could all have Bluetooth in our ears, and they don't fight each other, and that's all on 2.4. And we can still work in there, and you wouldn't even know we were on. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I did also want to bring up this other slide here. Um, you know, this was just kind of a cool comparison. Um, so, you know, if you are looking at getting into, uh, you know, the world of uh, wireless communication via wireless intercom, um, this is a great little um, kind of overview of how all of the Pliant Technologies products stacks up against each other. Um, you know, gives you the ability for having, um, you know, large systems all the way down to the, the small system. So I guess when you guys are talking with customers, how are you, um, you know, like determining the needs and, and figuring out like where you would position somebody um, or give them any, I guess, tips or tricks on, uh, you know, thinking further down the road, I guess, of expansion. Well, it, it, that's a that's a great question. So, one of the things um, that's very important in working, and this isn't just with our product, but you know, talking to any customer, the first thing we always do is start by asking questions. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you're doing it now. Tell me what you don't like about what you have, what you do like, and what things are missing for you and get an idea of the application because these are all application specific. So you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of the chart, it says Pro Intercom AD903. Pro Intercom is an independent company. They make an interface for our products for the, both the Microcom XR and M to interface to either two or four wire, existing wired intercom systems. Now we have those also in the CB2. So why would you want uh, to be, if you can interface, why would you want a CB2 versus an XR? Well, with the CB2, I need a rack mounted system. I'm a dry hire company and I'm running on shore power and I need to, you know, this is my format. The microcom, oh, hey, I'm, I'm traveling all over the place. I need this for my church, but then we do some outdoor things and we do some live events. So I need something to take around with me battery. So a lot of it will have to do with what their application is. And gotcha. that starts with asking about it. Yeah, I mean, you guys have really been rounding out, you know, your product offering with, you know, with all the different series. So it makes it super awesome that, you know, people, you know, some, sometimes the big barrier of getting into, you know, intercom is the the cost. You know, a lot of people, they are like, oh, you know, I, I love the communication that my, you know, wired system gives me, but I'm, I'm tethered. <laughs> so, you know, everyone wants to get into the wired and uh, it's, it's awesome that you guys have such a, a wide range. Well, you know, the, what's happened is people have gotten used to having a cell phone. They've gotten used to being untethered. So yep. that's important. So one other thing I'd like to bring up, uh, Sean, that I think is an important piece. Um, none of these things are an inexpensive item, right? We're not talking mm -hmm. about uh, $29.95. And even though some cell phones are over $1,000, we're not talking about buying many of them. Yeah. Uh, unless you have a large family. So uh, <laughs> one of the things we've done for the 900 meg systems is we've made a new offer for the customers because we don't want people to be worried. We want them to be happy and buy the right thing and be happy customers. So we are offering a 30-day money-back guarantee on all of the 900 meg products, any, any version. If a customer isn't certain, they don't have to worry that they're going to suddenly spend a lot of money on something they really need and get the wrong thing. We want them to have confidence and, uh, you know, we're happy to do that. Happily, uh, we haven't taken any back because people are happy, but we want you to know that you can do this without fear of failure. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an awesome program because really, I mean, yeah, it, it is tough spend, spending a lot of money, especially also uh, you know, maybe not being able to, to demo it or you know, just reading about it online. So you can take that faith and, and buy it and know that, uh, yeah, you're not going to be stuck with something that might not work for your application. So that's that's 
extremely awesome. Um, and if anyone out there is interested in, in demoing the system, you know, you can reach out to us at AudioBiz or visit us on the AudioBiz website at audiobiz.com. And we're more than happy to provide you guys with a, a demo and more of an in-depth overview of all of the different systems. Um, that are available from Pliant. So um, looks like we're kind of coming up, uh, you know, on the end of our, our half hour time. So I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for taking the time today to, you know, talk some gear and uh, make that introduction of the new CB2 product. I I'm going to be excited to get that out there. And now we can talk to the masses about it. Um, you know, so I appreciate you guys taking the time. And uh, Mark, I hope you find that uh, 412 uh, cabinet with the chrome handle someday at a pawn shop. You know, and uh, I might just have to build one. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, just recreate it. So awesome. Thank you guys again. And make sure uh, to rewind if you are catching the tail end of the broadcast to uh, find that secret word and uh, go to the AudioBiz website uh, at the end of the week and register um, at audiobiz.com forward slash NAM 2021 and enter those secret words to, to win uh, some fabulous prizes and some swag. So thank you guys again for coming. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean.